It began when it was learned that the malfunctioning Soviet spy satellite had fallen from orbit and crashed into the atmosphere over the remote Canadian wilderness near Great Slave Lake. Unlike most falling satellites that completely burn up when they re-enter, Cosmos 954 survived its fiery crashdown and broke into hundreds of fragments that scattered over the frozen land. The Soviet Union and Russia have had eight documented nuclear accidents and have dumped twice as much nuclear waste into the world's oceans as all other countries combined. If they've been historically inept when it comes to nuclear technology, they've been world leaders in hiding their mistakes. One accident the Soviets couldn't suppress was a nuclear-powered satellite that crashed on Canadian soil. Early Soviet spy satellites orbited the Earth at a height of about 250 kilometers for a few months. Then, when they were no longer operational, they were jettisoned to an orbit of some 1,000 kilometers. But when Cosmos 954, a nuclear-powered satellite that was launched in September 1977, finished its operational life, it started tumbling towards Earth. The North American Air Defense Command in Colorado noticed Cosmos 954 had started to descend and notified President Jimmy Carter. Carter phoned Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau and warned him that Canada was in the satellite's track. And within a very few weeks, the uh, monitoring system at NORAD had uh, detected that it had got out of control. The Americans in particular were concerned that it might crash on their mainland territory. When it happened on January the 24th, President Carter at that time called Prime Minister Trudeau and said, you know, it's crashed, we can help. In the early morning of January 24th, 1978, Mario Ruman, who ran a janitorial service in Yellowknife, saw lights in the sky. There was a main part, he said, like a bright light and lots of small parts trailing behind it. The main part was like a bright fluorescent light and each had a long bright tail. None of them made a sound. The remains of Cosmos 954 left a trail of radioactivity across some 124,000 square kilometers. The affected area spread into northern Alberta and Saskatchewan. The cleanup effort was a joint effort between Canada and the U.S. It took 10 months and resulted in the recovery of an estimated 0.1% of the satellite's nuclear power source. 12 large pieces were recovered, 10 of which were radioactive. One piece contained enough radioactivity to kill a person within a few hours of contact. It was hoped that most of the 50 kilograms of uranium, along with the radioactive strontium, cesium, and iodine, had burned up high in the atmosphere. But it was radioactive debris and the remains of Cosmos 954. It was approximately three meters in diameter with uh, an explosion-type splatter program uh, pattern around it in the ice from either other debris coming down and making holes or ice thrown up and uh, melting its way back in around the, around the area of the hole. There was a one big uh, crater and a bunch of little holes around it. That's correct. How many little holes around it? Uh, we didn't, didn't count them, but it estimates somewhere between maybe perhaps 50 and 100 of all assorted sizes. The Soviets offered little information on the satellite and minimal cooperation in the recovery. Under the terms of the 1972 Convention on International Liability for Damage Caused by Space Objects, the country that launches an object into space is responsible for any damage it causes. Canada billed the Soviet Union for $6,041,174.70 for the cleanup efforts. The Soviets eventually paid $3 million. Ironically, the initial impact was near... The El Dorado mine, where uranium used in the original Manhattan Project had been sourced. 